So we now have the honor of welcoming Mr. Dominic Barton. Um, he is Global Managing Director of McKinsey and Company. Um, Mr. Barton, during the last six months, you have engaged into discussions with CEOs and decision makers from politics all over the world. What are some of the core themes that you could identify? Well, there, there were a couple of buckets of themes that I talked about uh, today uh, here at St. Gallen, but the, the first one was really around what are the issues or challenges they're facing, and the second was what it's like for them as CEOs in the CEO suite. What are some of the challenges they face? And if I think about the uh, issues or opportunities that they see that are out there, there were five. Uh, the first was that uh, most of the CEOs, over half of them, and there are about 175 of them, and government leaders, think that the world is going to go through some major changes, and that's going to mean they're going to have to go through fundamental changes in their business over the next five to ten years, some within five years. And this is because of forces like the re-rise of Asia, the, re the billion people coming into the middle class in Asia and Africa and to some extent uh, South America. Um, it's due to demographic challenges which will require huge productivity improvements and technology changes. It's because the world's more wired up than it ever has been and will continue to be more networked. It's because we're going to have to reprice a lot of the commodities on the planet, including water, because of this huge demand and because the government's going to be playing a bigger role in the economy. So these are all big forces that I think make many people, including myself, want to step back and say, what does this all mean for us, for our orthodoxy? So that's one big, big one, big change. How do we deal with that? How quickly do we go after it? Uh, do I do it now in my time as a, as, a, as a CEO, or do I prepare it for the next person if there's time frame issues? The second issue is around technology people really wondering and searching for will there be technological innovation which will help my business or disrupt it and more enabling technology not cost reduction type stuff and I, I talked about some examples in healthcare uh, before where you have call centers with doctors supporting medical workers with six months worth of medical education in rural areas in India and China right at a hundred the cost of what we'd see in other places but with a lot of impact uh, the third a uh, big shift we're seeing, if you will, is around M&A. A lot of people saying that M&A activity is going to go up. A lot of people building war chests. A lot of, uh, so a lot of discussions going on in that front, which suggests to us a wave happening. Uh, a fourth was on increased role of government, uh, like one of those five forces I mentioned. But these people were spending on average 20 to 30 percent more of their time on government-related stuff, regulations, working with the government to fix country problems. Um, dealing with requests coming from the government, just more time that's there. And the final one was volatility, just a sense that the world will be more volatile uh, over time, not like we had in 2008. So is that, those are some of the things we heard on the issues. Um, on, the, on, the, there, on the CEO suite and how they were, there were issues about loneliness, uh, issues about not having enough, enough time to do what they wanted to do. Um, issues about do they really understand who their talent is at a, at a fundamental leadership way, you know, in the sense of are they, do these people have resilience, are they perseverant, um, are they, can they listen? Um, so these were some of the issues that we'd, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd heard there and just that the, the, the pace of activity has gone up and how to deal with transitions. And if we, if we may jump in right there. You also mentioned something about what you call leadership intangibles. Yeah. So something, certain attributes that successful leaders all over the world share. Yeah. Could you describe a little bit about that? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of very good books out there about leadership characteristics. And they're, they're often on, you know, having a vision and knowing your people and um, having a clear perspective of where you want to go and all of that. There's, there's a number of intangibles, though, that aren't out there, I think, but are very important. And those are things, like I'd say, this resilience. There's so many issues that we're facing in the world. Can you, can you handle a setback? Can you handle a failure? Will you just pick yourself up and move? And that's a very important part of leadership is resilience and perseverance. And it's not talked about. You can't put that on your resume. You have to demonstrate it. Uh, so that, that's one uh, very important uh, aspect of it. I'd say another one is actually around 
tasking people? This sounds like a very boring, simplistic topic, but how do you communicate and encourage people to do what you need them to do and ensure it doesn't end up, you know, you think you've agreed, but then they end up over here and you're wondering why. So there's the whole notion of, of tasking. A third one is actually what I call stability. It's a bit related to resilience, but how stable is this person? It, it, this, this comes down to things even like fitness and family uh, and so forth. But how, how solid are you to take things as they come? And there's elements of that that you need to look at because of this volatility uh, uh, that, that we're seeing. And I, I, probably another one I would believe is, is, um, is inspiring people, but it's not the kind of charis charisma. It's how can, some people are very good at telling tough messages to people and having them be inspired. And that's a very difficult thing to do, but it, so you, it doesn't mean being positive only or just an optimist, but it means being able to tell tough messages and inspire people and move them forward again, related a bit to me in resilience. The general topic of this year's St. Gallen Symposium is on entrepreneurship. Now, prior to assuming your current position, you led McKinsey and Company in Asia. Yeah. Um, when you compare the, uh, the perception or the approach to entrepreneurship between Asia and the Western world, do you see certain differences or are they the same? I actually see a lot of commonalities. I mean, uh, young Chinese entrepreneur is very similar to a young entrepreneur in the Silicon Valley or in Boston or somewhere. There's a risk-taking, uh, bold, uh, scrambling to, to try and make it work, very positive about where things are going to go. So I don't, I don't think there's, I think there's some of the, there's barriers that you see. There isn't as much capital in Asia to be able to get it, so I think you have to be even more dogged, you know what I mean? There's it, it, on the other hand, there's, it's a less efficient market, so if you find a spot, you can probably move faster. So it's more the context is different, but not the characteristics, I think. And I see that when you get entrepreneurs from these different parts together, they, they speak the same language. What is your perception of the intergenerational dialogue at the St. Gallen Symposium? Uh, what do you mean in terms of the students, students and, and uh, yeah. decision makers from all over the world and all backgrounds? This is my first time to St. Gallen and what I, I really like about this conference is how it's being run by the students, which is fantastic. I don't know of many of these that are done at the professional level this is done. I mean I just see a lot of very well-known executives who are here who are obviously spending a serious amount of time on serious issues and there's a real peer-like relationship. I even think about in the talk, it was a mixture. I don't know where people, it was all, all over the place, but everyone was together, if you will. And, and I, so it's very impressive. I think it's very good. And I think there's a lot of uh, events that are going on that, that reinforce that. One, one I'm keen to go on tonight is this, uh, it's a dinner I think you have with students in one of the dorms or something like that, which I'm really keen to go to to see what that's like. That, we don't do that at other conferences, so. Great. Well, Mr. Barton, thank you very much for your time and these insights. Thank you.